<laughs> well, it's got a solar panel on the front, oh. on, on the top, and then it's like, got, you, you should be able to drive it into the mud, and it's, it's a Winnebago, but I peeled all the stickers off because I hate that. <laughs> okay. And it's just little and lightweight and durable so that we can, it's our house. Yeah, no kidding. It's, it's awesome. It has a toilet. Really I was gonna say yeah. Now some of them come full pack. It's like <laughs> it's living in a house. Well, I know it really does. Then we just have like our cooler. It has a little refrigerator and all that stuff. Oh yeah. A couple of outdoor speakers. Well, we're Jess and Julie Fasky, and we made this organization, which is just us called Walk for the Love, just to walk from one end of the country, from one ocean to the other end of the country, to the other mm -hmm. ocean. And my take on it is that every step of the way we're walking through communities where people are dying of drug overuse. And the easiest thing to do is just to let people know about naloxone, which is a, the reversal agent for opioids. Mm -hmm. So basically anyone that dies of an overdose on opioids could be saved just by having naloxone. So I feel like every one of those steps is needless. <coughs> so that's kind of the idea of it for me and people are always like oh the big cities there's drug problems or we don't have those kind of people here or we do have those kind of people here but it's all people yeah. like anyone can be suffering from opioid yeah. use and yeah. yeah every family i mean anyone so we're just trying to talk about it and get it out in the open and try and help reduce the stigma associated with that yeah, so the idea was to walk diagonally across the country. I'm not sure why, but um, <laughs> it was here. I think uh, I mentioned that you know I've never been to Maine before. It's one of the like four states that I've never been yeah. to: Hawaii, Alaska, Delaware, Connecticut, and Maine. Rhode Island, I thought. Yeah, so now we've got Maine out of the way. And I've always wanted to see a Katy National Park too. So yeah, I mean, you can pick any arbitrary arbitrary place between. From coast to coast, and yeah. they relay. Yeah, so I'll usually start off in the morning with my miles, and then Julie will drive ahead uh, and uh, just take off. And yeah. if the weather's good, she'll walk with one of the dogs. And we have two dogs with us. One is one years old, and one is almost well, going on seventeen years old. Ah, uh, stories. Well, that's, that's one that stuck out so far. This is probably the first leg of the proper night, the first yeah. third of the like, story. You know, just like, you know, you know and um, kind of going along with our, our general theme of the walk, and, um, as you know, we, we try to talk or engage with people along the way. And, you know, one thing I do just as kind of a little game is um, when I start talking to someone, I'll say, Do you know what Narcan is? You know, mm -hmm. and then that kind of opens the door for that conversation. And so most people do. Um, Which is so we right. You know, Julie's had one encounter that I'll let her tell you about. Um, and then, uh, conversely, I talked to one guy who just pulled over right at the New York, Vermont state lines out in the country. And we had a long conversation just in the middle of the road, you know, in his truck. And um, he said, well, I have mixed feelings about Narcan. And, you know, like, by the end of the conversation, he was totally on board with, you know, the idea of saving lives as opposed to, you know. I talked to a woman who was a retired police officer, and it was at a lovely park, and we had other, like, she had a dog like ours, and it was just really chill there and nice, and she was like, Narcan, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. You make that choice, that's your choice. I'm like, oh, well, you've never made a mistake before. Like, initially, I felt really angry, like I hated her. And then I'm like, well, this is what we're doing, is we're out here talking to people. Right. <laughs> but yeah. she, she was so, you know, just 100% dead set. And I'm like, well, I'm glad you're retired because you shouldn't be, like, working with the public if you feel that strongly about saving someone's life if they make a bad choice, mm -hmm. you know, as a police officer. But she was not 
budging on it. She just was everything in her life was perfect. No one ever would make a mistake. <laughs> she had never made a mistake in her life. <laughs> and then it started raining, so you yeah, so could stop talking. Could stop talking. Okay. <laughs> but also, she was cool. Otherwise, like she volunteered and drove people to and from the Appalachian Trail, and she organized this big thing for all these children at this park we were at. And yeah. Like she, she was very like on one level community oriented and giving, and then. But not for the drug users, you know. It's just, I don't know. And it's a hard label. Yeah. You know? Yeah, there's a lot more that people that use drugs than that one part, because she couldn't you know, see that. There's a, there's a stigma. There's a stigma around the, the use of drugs, the use of Narcan being used to save these people. Mm -hmm. so that's what you're saying. It's, yes. We, we have this life saving antidote to somebody's addiction. Yes. And, uh, there's some people that have a sentiment that, no, we don't need it. They don't want people to have it because then that will encourage them to use drugs and stay back. Mm -hmm. No, it will encourage them to stay alive so they can choose not to, mm -hmm. or so that they can parent their children, or they can live another day to do other things that they do that might be really wonderful. Yeah. You know, but... How many more miles do you guys have to go? Do you count it? Uh, Lots. <laughs> we're uh, at least 3,000, right? Well, it's, I, I think it's about a 3,500 mile total trip. Oh, wow. And uh, I think we've done about 600 miles. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we got a ways to go. But originally, where my thing all started, where I've had people mm -hmm. in my family that got into the wrong places, the wrong setups, they lost their job, lost a lot of stuff, just due to normal life stuff, and got onto some of the worser stuff. Yeah. and. My uncle fought with it for years, his addiction, before um, he was able to get a, himself taken care of, get yeah. in the right programs, the right people mm -hmm. to talk to. Yeah. And he was able to turn his life around. It was great how, and then he ended up, unfortunately, taking his life because oh, yeah. he didn't have the the support that, there was, we were still supporting him, but people just started not talking to him as much, not being there for him. And yeah, yeah being in the state that he was coming out of it he just he couldn't handle it and unfortunately he didn't make it but so that's such a struggle you know i know like especially the struggle's still hard to stay alive and to be able to be you know train ourselves yeah. yeah it's hard because not everybody's always there not everybody's as understanding or i mean yes it is situational but Everybody, I do think everybody should know about it because like here, unfortunately on Main Street, I've had a couple people like just drop in the street and then instantly there's a 911 call and the ambulances are here. Everybody's doing everything they can. Um, my, unfortunately my wife as well, her, her family, her brother, her oldest brother, um, had kind of the same situation happen to him. He's in a bad situation in life, got him with the wrong people. Now he's coming back out of it yeah. a little bit here and here and there. Um, but like him, we've had, unfortunately, a lot of really close calls. And every time the doctors have been able, they've been able to come up, show up and save his life right then and there and get him to the hospital and yeah. do what they needed to yeah. because it was on time. I feel personally, I think it's our first responders. There are the really big help to the cause because if they are able to make it to every call, every situation on time or early, it's perfect because that gives the chance for us and that person to be able to live, you know, right, be able to come yeah. back and live their life freely like they were supposed to, find help to get out of it. It's painful to watch. Don't be scared. It's okay. She's, um, she's really scared of cars. Mm. And this trail goes along the highway. So the whole time she's just like, oh. And she's getting used to it. Cool, it's fine really important it's something that everybody should have a great amount of focus on because we want people to live <laughs> exactly we yeah. want everybody to be that you can do the one thing that you can prevent mm -hmm. is prevent someone dying from overdose and you can yeah well it's really good to talk to you it was really good talking our day just uh yeah no because you know, it's like we have a few minutes here and there with people along the way but oh yeah very rarely do we like have a chance to talk in depth with people yeah no and i'm i'm yeah. always one well, that's like i was saying i'm so happy you guys are here because i'm able to express 
my thoughts, my feelings, yeah, because yeah. I've been there. Yeah. I've, yeah. yeah. Steaks. Yeah. Everything. Morning, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Uh, Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Narcan saves lives. <laughs> Hard people to live. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. All right. I'm three. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. We want people to live. <laughs> With a thousand percent more expression. Okay. Let's get to live. I was going to say, I didn't know if you wanted me to say anything. One, two, three. We want, we want people, people to live. live. <laughs>